trust more than letting somebody come into your house and sit there and sell you something? That is so difficult to do, but it's very, very important. And by the way, it starts with you. It always starts with you and what your integrity is, always. So today, the funnel has changed. The marketing funnel has changed totally. In the old days, when I first started in marketing, it was always about what's going to be on television. Let's put, let's get media on television because everybody watched TV, right? And we still watch content, but not the same way we used to. And we did radio and print and promotional um, selling, and that gave everybody consideration. So it's awareness and consideration, and then the intent of uh, whether somebody was going to buy. And that was a salesperson in a store. When was the last time you saw a salesperson in a store? When was the last time you went to a retail store to buy anything, right? So to, it used to be POSs and, and, and point of purchase um, displays that actually got you to buy something. Not anymore. Today, it's all about trust. Uh, you would only make a purchase, um, you would only get a purchase made after you had awareness and it was an impulse purchase. So from a purchase, you really needed to have an offline community because there was no online community. There was no digital. So that's the only way you got loyalty is by building a better product, a better mousetrap than somebody else. And then you'd have to have advocacy. It was almost impossible to get advocacy you know, offline. It's really impossible because there's no community around it. Today, the funnel's changed. And the funnel's all about experience. And it's about experiential today. And it's really about making people feel that they're important and that you are targeting directly to them. And it's very critical how it has really changed. And really, it's in the middle right here that the transaction happens. And it's really about the social experience and the shared experience and how do you get people engaged. And engagement is so critical. And I gotta tell you guys, it costs money to get people engaged. So everybody forgets about the budget. And people come to me and they go, I spent $10 million developing our product and our, and our, and our technology. Isn't this great? And I said, well, how are people going to know that you're there? The Field of Dreams is just a fantasy. It was a movie with Kevin Costner. That was about it, you know? So they don't come. The dead people don't come to you to buy from you, you know? So really, the evolution of digital trends has been really pretty amazing. So what are you watching today? Are you watching cable? Are you watching time-shifted TV? I would say most millennials are plugging their computers in and watching Hulu and Netflix and anything without a TV commercial for any of the millennials that are here. They never even know what a commercial is, right? 98%, 98% of people watch time shift to TV today. So television is not the reach and frequency it used to be. Um, so you've got to be more clever, more creative, and you've got to develop your video not just for television, but also for digital. So it's really, really critical about what happened. And let me just tell you that it's uh, seven in 10 houses watch commercial-free TV, which is 98 million people. And they watch their TV through DVRs, videos, on-demand, and streaming video services. Uh, I, would, I hate watching television commercials, and that's my business, right? So, and online purchasing habits. You know, it's interesting. Digital is something that people are, are adopting in the last couple years, the last few years. And I find it interesting, in 2002, we had our first website built for a, a big product. We had a huge TV and, and print campaign for it. And uh, we were generating so much volume from TV in those days. And about 5% of our sales in 2002, 2003 came through the internet. People didn't trust it at that time. There was no such, such thing as an SSL certificate. There was no trust of putting your credit card on, you know, in, you know, online, and everybody was scared half to death. You should be more scared today, of course, than you were back then. But uh, everybody was scared. In 2007, we were getting 35% of our revenue from the internet. So people were starting to trust it more today. It's 90%, 90%, really important. And um, and so and and the transactions online are growing at an exponential rate. Remember that, very important. So how do you start for monetization? What's really critical for it? You gotta start with digital. You have no choice today. And it is not cheap, it is complicated, because you've got so many multiple channels and multiple platforms in digital. So basically, you really, the thing that's great about digital is that you insta instantly connect with so many different demographics. But you have to have creative for each one of those demographics. 
how you're going to sell on Facebook, which is now an older demographic, is different than you are on Instagram and Snapchat. So uh, Snapchat, you're only going to be dealing with teens and young millennial and, and millennials, and um, and Instagram and Pinterest and all the new uh, programs and all the new platforms that are coming up, including YouTube and all the videos. Today, what we find is that video is more critical than ever uh, for um, you know for digital and very very critical. Um, basically, you're going to reach an audience that may not be aware of traditional advertising, so you have to have make sure your messaging is emotionally connecting to those people. Always, always an emotional connection. Why do you make a purchase? You see a dress in a magazine, or you see a dress on your favorite actress or a top, you've got to have that, right? And then you go to see whether you can afford it next. You never go and say, can I afford it, and then let me look at the dress, right? So it's very important that you really understand you know, what you're trying to sell and who you're trying to sell to, and digital really takes a lot of the guesswork out of that. Um, you, and the other great thing is you're able to tailor different messaging to different people, depending on really where, you know, where, you're, where you're selling your product. And the same exact thing goes, if you're going to Walmart to sell to a buyer, or you're going to Nordstrom's, are you gonna sell the same way? No, of course not. You're gonna have different packaging for that buyer at Nordstrom's that you are, than you are for Walmart. You may have a different name, a different brand name for that product. But the point is, make sure you know who you're talking to, right? You've got to make sure you know that. It's very important. The other great thing about digital is you can quickly correct your messaging. So what's interesting is that uh, we have people that come to us all the time and they say to me, well, we understand what our messaging should be. I would say, well, how successful have you been? We can't get a sale. We can't do anything. We can't get anybody to like us. We can't get any engagement. Because your messaging doesn't really match up with what your brand is and what you're trying to do. Because you haven't done something really critical, and that's creative strategy. So that's really important. The strategy is the single most important thing that you need to start with. And also, what's great about digital guys is you get to hyper-focus and target on the right, in the right audience. Uh, we have clients that actually get their, put their products in retail. And when they go to retail, we will geolocate and actually offer coupons and discounts and all sorts of deals to those people living in a certain geographic area. If somebody's trying to get into a Nordstrom's or a Sephora, what do you think we do? Before they go, we will have a budget to spend around the zip codes of where the buyers live. So by the time they come in, what do they do? They, oh my God, we've been waiting for you. So there's an old story that uh, from somebody that, uh, from people we know, and. Uh, and it's the guest jeans story. I don't know if anybody knows the story, but they all the four brothers used to work for Jordache jeans. And they decided they were much smarter and much better than the guys from Jordache jeans, and they were right. And what they did is they started hiring hot girls that would go around to all the retail stores and walk in and say, you know, do you guys have guest jeans? Do you have guest jeans? I've been waiting for the guest jeans. When uh, when the Marciano brothers walked into the buying office, they said, oh my God, we are so happy. We are besieged with people wanting to buy your product, right? Well, guess what? Today, you don't have to hire 10,000 people. You've got the internet to do it for you. So you've got to start with digital. So this really helps you really understand the behavior of who your client is and, and what they really want. So whether, again, you're doing a B2B or a B2C or a B2B2C, which a lot of people are doing now and we recommend for them to do. So. You've really got to do a customer acquisition and branding ROI. And you've got to build your ecosystem. And I have to tell you that there is some people, there are some people and some brands that don't need all of these things. But there are other brands, and most of them need most of it. Who here thinks that word of mouth isn't important? It's critical that people say great things about your brand. Influencers are so powerful. When an influencer says, isn't it better when somebody says, you know, Scott Busby does a great job for me for PR instead of Scott saying it, right? That's what influencers do. And it doesn't have to be the influencer you think it should be. Sometimes, if you've got a tech product, it could be the mommy bloggers. That they're excited because this does something for them as a mommy to make their life easier or more simple. Whatever it is, you've got to have a strategy and a plan that's timed out with a timeline and a budget, and it all works together. It's very, very important. 
You've got to have distribution. He who has distribution wins at the end of the day, guys. Distribution is critical, right? But you'll never get distribution unless you do the rest of this chart here. Super important. Social media. People say, oh, I got a niece, I got a daughter, I got a son. I'll pay them $15 an hour. They can do it. No, they can't. They cannot do it. And I can't tell you how many sons and daughters and nieces should be fired from their jobs because all they're doing is collecting $15 an hour, and maybe that's what the parents want to do with them, but it's not helping them at all. Um, social media today is a science. It's an art and a science that comes together to actually make magic and get you sales, right? But you've got to know, you've got to build your brand first. Um, celebrity promotions, always fantastic, you know, always great. And the people from Sony and from Marvel here know how important it is to have great stars promoting their movies and their, and their products and their games, etc. Really critical. Um, emails, um, merchant partnerships. Um, anybody here who ha has a business and doesn't have, mer doesn't have partnerships, you're, it's crazy because everybody's looking to expand their business. They're all looking for new business. You're not the only one out there that's looking to really expand where you are in where you are at in life for today. So whether you're looking for a job, whether you're looking for, no matter what you're looking for, trust me, the partnerships get you where you want to go much, much faster. And don't be afraid to go after them because they need you probably more than you need them. It's really, really a funny scenario that happens. The minute you start talking about what you're trying to sell and what you're trying to brand, but you don't tell them you're selling. You say, let me see, what can, what can I do for you? Just try a little bit to find out what you can do for somebody else instead of how they can make a purchase and make you wealthy. Nobody cares about you. What they care about is what you can do for them. So very important. So mobile is equally as important today. As, as crazy in 2002, 2003 as the internet was, that Al Gore invented, as crazy as that was, what's even crazier is that people today are not advertising on mobile. I don't understand it. I mean, how many of you don't pick up their phone a hundred times a day? How many times? Does anybody pick up their phone a hundred times a day? Two, three hundred times a day? How about a thousand times a day? Right? How many people live with that phone attached? That's attached to their hand 24 hours a day, right? And you can't let go of it. And the first thing you do when you are searching for a service or a product, you go to Google, right? And you see what people are saying about it, right? It's the first thing you do. Second thing a lot of people do, depending on who they are, they'll go to their social media and see what their friends are saying about it. Offline. I know why I was talking negative about offline before. It's not that it's negative. It's just that it's a branding methodology today as opposed to a sales funnel for you today. So make sure that you use that offline and know that you are not going to get the return on your advertising investment as you would have 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And so, um, so all of this really works together and, and creating your brand ecosystem is really critical. So what do you have to do that makes you different? Well, you've got to have unique selling propositions, right? And this is an area I find everybody gets so in their own head, they never ever look outside for help in understanding what you think is important to the world is not. It's usually something else. So what does your brand do best, okay? What does the consumer want? This is the most important one. What does the consumer want? And what does your competitor do best? I can't tell you. I mean, it goes out oh, that competitor. It doesn't mean anything. But the competitor has more money. They have a bigger wallet than you do. And I promise you, they will come after you, and they will destroy you with a bigger wallet. So you've got to do some other things that are better for them. So the winning zone is the clear point of difference that really meets the needs of the consumer out there. And the losing zone is when your competitor does better than you do. And nobody knows who you are. And you, and if you and your competition are both meeting the needs, you better execute it better than they do. If you do, you can be in the winning zone right here. So. I'm going to give you a case study. So, <laughs> so my good friend Eddie Pham came to me a few months ago and he says, so what do you know about fintech? And I said, well, I happen to know a lot about fintech. I know about two days worth of fintech. <laughs> my son came to me and said, I'm, going to, I'm doing fintech at school, right, at USC, and that's going to be my career. I thought it was called phytech, right? So that's how smart I was, right? So I, so I spout off all the things I know about fintech. And he comes to me with this concept 
of what he did, which is a credit card that toggles to an app. And we created a name for the product called Complete, because it's a complete transaction, a complete platform that we're creating. And he is a genius product developer and, and brilliant technology, and he's got great foresight. And I'll take my money later. And, um, and basically, what we needed to do was to really, really position this as an innovation, really a fintech innovation and global data platform. Because for the investment banking community and the finance community, that's what they want to see. You know, what's the database at the end of the day? So basically, what we did is we really took um, the vision of the company. Uh, Eddie built the technology, and our job is to really create commerce for it, right? So you get a complete transaction and a complete experience with it. So, and by the way, they had another name for it called Cool Card that was so bad, so we changed it to Complete, you know? So, uh, and I'll never let him forget it anyway. Give yeah, it a go. <laughs> I'm not letting it go. So basically, basically what this is is the following. It's a host card emulator. Um, for people who don't know what that is, it's a card that holds all your loyalty cards, your debit cards, your credit cards, your, your um, gym, your membership cards, your gift cards. And basically, you put them all in the credit card. This is a screen that is a 2.6. 2.5, 2.6. You, two, I, I don't know. Anyway, it's the same size as a credit card. Um, but on that side, there's a screen. And you touch the screen, and what happens is you double tap it for the credit card you want. So if you want your Amex to come up and pay with your Amex, it'll come up. If you want your CVS card to come up, it'll come up. So you now have uncluttered your life, you have really organized your life, and you only need to go out with one phone, one credit card, and for us girls, lipstick. That's about it, right? Um, it also does peer-to-peer, -peer, account to account money transfers in a safe environment. It's called a closed loop system. It's a patented system. Um, it is geo-targeted. Uh, Eddie made deals with all these different companies so that every single day you will get pushed to deals of the day if you choose to. And you can get discounts and be entered into sweepstakes. And so let's just say you're walking down the street. My office is in Brentwood. And you've got a Starbucks and you're a Starbucks loyalty person. And there's a Pete's and there's a coffee bean down the street. And what will happen is that coffee bean all of a sudden will come up and say, Save five dollars. Come to Coffee Bean right now. You'll go to Coffee Bean. Coffee Bean has just for five dollars acquired you as a customer. That is the least expensive acquisition cost that they will have that to uh, acquire a customer and get them away from their loyal Starbucks. Um, we have near fill charging. There's data mining. There's an EMV magnetic strip and an NFC near field communication. So EMV is the little chip that you put into the uh, machine. And what happens is that, you know, the HCE part of this, uh, everybody says, well, how does this compete with Apple, right? So here's the two problems that they had, right? How do we compete with Apple, right? Well, Apple doesn't have the EMV machines. You can't use an EMV. You can't use the chips. Every merchant in this country has spent billions of dollars putting those machines in in the last five years, right? They just got them activated in the last year. So what we're doing is not changing a behavior that you're, even though the app is the brains for this, you put the credit card in there, right? And basically, so we had that issue. Then there have been some HCE cards that have come out, and these sales have been great, but nobody's been able to execute. So they have failed. They have really failed in the marketplace. And we will be the first people that will be able to deliver something for them. So basically, basically what we're doing is we create a strategic objective for them. We created a whole strategy for them. And the objective is really position this as a one of its kind to deliver the highest level consumer experience, starting with technology to application. Remember I said nobody's watching TV commercials on TV before? Well, there's going to be a place on this that we're going to be delivering complete content to you. And we have 129,000 merchants that are already associated with this through a partnership that Eddie formed with Deluxe Financial Services. Now, what's interesting about it is that what we're going to do is we're going to gamify that content when it's delivered to you. And it's going to change the whole, it's going to be a paradigm shift for people in advertising. Because it's going to be a way for them to deliver 6 to 12 second advertising to people. And I think even though we're going to have an opt out for the millennials and those who don't want to get advertising, we're going to gamify it. Questions, it's going to, you're going to be entered into sweepstakes, you're going to win prizes, you're going to be able to answer questions and get points in cash right there put onto your card. So it does a lot more than I'm telling you, but I wanted to give you an example of what a real branding strategy objective really should look like. 